Alrighty. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. As we get rolling live here, uh, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. And tonight I am talking about autoimmune gastritis. Again, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. We're now live on Facebook and YouTube. So why are we talking about autoimmune gastritis? As I mentioned in the prelude video last night, autoimmune gastritis is really important for neurologists because it can lead to vitamin deficiencies. Most importantly in the world of neuropathy and the spinal cord is B12. And so having a good understanding of how the stomach can really affect other areas of the body is super important for neurologists. And that's why we're talking about autoimmune gastritis for all of our folks who are really interested in autoimmunity and functional applications to that. I think this will also be of interest to you. And if you know someone with an iron deficiency or you know someone with a vitamin B12 deficiency and their stomach doesn't necessarily bother them, then this may also be of interest to you. And good evening to everyone who is joining. So, hi, 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 hi. So, without further ado, I want to get into kind of what the stomach is and what's going on in the stomach. Here's a nice diagram of the stomach for those of you watching on YouTube. Our Facebookers can go back and watch it on YouTube. But your stomach is kind of like a pouch, and it has different regions to the pouch. We have basically the fundus up here. We have the corpus as its term, which is the body, the stomach. We have the antrum of the stomach, which is more down at the bottom. As is diagrammed here, H. pylori, which is a really common bacteria that at least 50% of Americans have, upwards of 86% of the world population has it at any given time or has had it. Uh, H. pylori tends to colonize and create issues down at the base of the stomach, referred to as the antrum. When a gastroenterologist goes in and they look at the stomach of someone who has autoimmune gastritis, they're more going to see effects in, as they refer to as the oxnitic mucosa, excuse me, the oxnitic mucosa here in the corpus or the body of the stomach, maybe the fundus too. And so that's kind of a differentiating factor. But really, what is autoimmune gastritis? It's where the immune system is literally attacking the stomach. And when the immune system attacks the stomach, what happens? Well, namely, the parietal cells of the stomach are affected. You have different types of cells in your stomach from a histology uh, element. So you have parietal cells, and you have chief cells, and you have other cells that secrete uh, different secretions like gastrin. And so the parietal cells are of particular importance here. The parietal cells have the proton pump. That many of you have heard of. So you're watching commercials at night and they talk about a, a PPI or a proton pump inhibitor. These proton pumps lie within your parietal cells. And when people develop autoimmune gastritis, the immune system is literally attacking basically the proton pump. So what does that mean? Basically hydrochloric acid, because the proton pump basically leads to hydrogen ions going into the stomach. Why do you want that? Because you need an acidic environment to break down your food. If you don't have an acidic environment in your stomach, you don't break down your food well. That's kind of one of the, the chief purposes of your stomach. And if you don't have an acidic environment in your stomach, you're going to have a hard time getting basically things like B12 separated from the proteins you're eating, and you're going to have a hard time breaking down your proteins. <clears throat> so autoimmune gastritis is really bad because now your immune system is attacking that proton pump. And as a consequence, things are not broken down appropriately. Vitamins are not going to be absorbed. The first vitamin deficiency to show up is actually iron deficiency anemia. So that's really, really, really important. So if you have been told you have iron deficiency anemia and your doctors don't know why and you don't have something bleeding in your GI tract, so you've gone to the gastroenterologist and done an endoscopy, they've done a colonoscopy, and you still have this nebulous iron deficiency anemia, you may want to think about autoimmune gastritis. Now, the next question is, well, why isn't my doctor testing me for that? And the answer is, 
I don't know, except I see a lot of patients who have iron deficiency anemia or even B12 deficiency anemias, and they just haven't been checked for autoimmune gastritis. Uh, as is talked about in these journal articles I'm going to show you, uh, they, they heavily mention that autoimmune gastritis is kind of one of these things that's it's increasing in incidence, they don't really know why, and is not being tested for nearly enough. <clears throat> so, as I'll also mention a little bit later, it's important to know that your thyroid and your stomach grow out of the same endodermal embryological tissue. So from an embryology standpoint, you know, when you're a little fetus, your stomach and thyroid basically grow from the same tissue. So that's kind of important. So just going through this, um, this image, which I think is really nice, it, it presents things well. Basically, H. pylori gastritis may have no symptoms, or you may have dyspepsia. As I mentioned last night, dyspepsia is where a person is going to feel full. They may have some acidic symptoms in their esophagus. They have bloating. They may eat and then get full really quickly. So those are dyspepsia symptoms. And H. pylori folks are not necessarily going to have a high gastrin, and then other markers will be normal relative to pepsinogen. Uh, they will have high antibody stage pylori, they'll have different stages of gastritis, and there's an increased chance of gastric cancer according to the gastritis stage. So that's H. pylori, again, this semi-ubiquitous bacteria uh, that's seen in at least half of Americans, 86% of the world population. Whereas autoimmune gastritis is a little different, not only in location of the gastritis, again, it's going to be up higher, but they're going to have high gastrin. Again, they may have no symptoms or they may have dyspepsia. Uh, they're going to have high gastrin. Pepsinogen may be low and they're going to present with antibodies to the stomach or intrinsic factor. So as I mentioned before, the parietal cells have the proton pump. So autoimmune gastritis patients have antibodies to parietal cells. So they're antiparietal cell positive. And then through time, lots of times you'll see antibodies to intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is what binds to your B12 and is carried down through your small intestines to the last part of your small intestine called the ileum, and that's where the B12 is absorbed, as long as it's attached to intrinsic factor. If you don't have intrinsic factor because your immune system is obliterating your stomach and it's not being produced, then you're not going to absorb B12. Um, they're saying corpus-restricted gastritis. Gastric cancer is increased according to the gastritis uh, stage. Um, and then also carcinoid increased according to oxidic atrophy score. So look up that journal if you want to read further. Now, I found this article super interesting because I've seen a lot of patients with autoimmune thyroiditis through the years. And autoimmune thyroiditis, referred to as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, is a super common condition. Depending on who you talk to, maybe 5% of the population, maybe 30% of women in the middle age demographic. So it just kind of depends on which articles you read and what their criteria for what is Hashimoto's and what isn't. Um, basically, the laboratory ranges for this have come down through the years. So some labs say 100 is the high value for the thyroid peroxidase antibody. Others say nine is the high value for the thyroid peroxidase antibody. So it just kind of depends on the lab and it's not always actually apples to apples. So just because Quest says a high value is nine doesn't necessarily mean that something over a nine on a lab core reading is always Hashimoto's. So there is some, there's some gray range there um, because, because lab course is 34. Nonetheless, without further ado, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. What the authors talked about here is that relationship I mentioned before, where the stomach and the thyroid grow from the same embryological tissue. And they have very similar features, like they have sodium iodine pumps that are very similar. And researchers started noticing, particularly in around 1960, that a lot of autoimmune gastritis patients have Hashimoto's. And they've also seen a lot of Hashimoto's patients seem to have autoimmune gastritis. And if you have autoimmune gastritis, by the time it goes to its most severest form in the chronic atrophic gastritis or chronic autoimmune gastritis in the atrophic form, 40% 
of them will have Hashimoto's. And I think it's just about the same thing. About 40% of Hashimoto's patients will possibly develop um, autoimmunity to the stomach. So that's really, 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 really important for all of you autoimmune folks out there who have digestive symptoms or you don't have digestive symptoms. If you have Hashimoto's and you have iron deficiency anemia, if you have Hashimoto's and you have a B12 deficiency anemia, a lot of functional doctors are going to say your Hashimoto's is decreasing your ability to produce acid in your stomach because with Hashimoto's and thyroid conditions, everything tends to slow down when we're in a hypothyroid state or even with Hashimoto. Um, so that's important. And then they'll say, okay, well, you're not making enough stomach acid, so that's why you're iron deficient or that's why you're B12 deficient. And I would argue you really want to make sure you're being screened for autoimmune gastritis because that may be actually what's going on where your immune system is obliterating your stomach now, not only your thyroid, but your stomach. And I thought this little uh, image right here is nice just for you to look at in talking about how the thyroid and the stomach are the same embryological origin. And you can go on and read this if you so choose. Now, this article, they talked about the association of autoimmune type atrophic corpus gastritis with Helicobacter pylori infection, H. pylori. And here they showed that there was a definite relationship between H. pylori inducing autoimmune gastritis. So they said, in conclusion, atrophic corpus gastritis, including autoimmune type severe atrophy with vitamin B12 malabsorption, is associated with a longstanding H. pylori infection in most cases. There is an urgent need for population-based studies to assess the effect of H. pylori eradication on the development of vitamin B12 malabsorption. Long-winded sentence basically just saying that H. pylori they found to be associated with autoimmune gastritis. Other articles you'll read will say that there's no relationship. And this is a confusing point because H. pylori seems to cause gastritis in a different area than autoimmune gastritis. But there is a lot of evidence saying that somehow the H. pylori infection may be associated with autoimmune gastritis. And then in this article, they looked at it further saying, okay, what is your genetic risk factors or what are your genetic risk factors combined with an H. pylori infection? And does that translocate into risk of autoimmune atrophic gastritis and gastric cancer? And they basically said, yes, there's a certain type of protein on certain strains of H. pylori and that associated with different toll-like receptor uh, polymorphisms, toll-like receptors basically are involved in immune responses may favor the onset of autoimmune atrophic gastritis and gastric cancer, at least in a subset of patients. So that's what we know. So the takeaway message is if you have Hashimoto's and you have iron deficiency and or B12 deficiency, you really want to be tested for autoimmune gastritis. If you have autoimmune gastritis, it is important to follow up with a gastroenterologist because we want to make sure that there's not the development of a gastric cancer eventually because that can happen. That happens because in, in this autoimmune gastritis condition where we develop the autoimmune atrophic gastritis, the parietal cells start to change into basically intestinal cells and metaplastic cells. So it's almost like your, your skin of your stomach becomes more like the intestines and it can go into a metaplasia. You probably have heard of metaplasia before. It's not necessarily a good thing because that can translocate into cancer. So that's important. Or if you just know someone who has iron deficiency and they don't know why and they've seen the GI specialist and they don't have a bleeding ulcer uh, or they're developing signs of a B12 deficiency or B12 anemia, they really need to be checked for autoimmune gastritis in my experience as well. I've worked with a lot of autoimmune gastritis patients. I've, I've diagnosed it because if you look for it, you can find it. And there's a lot of discussion about bismuth and bismuth preparations for helping this type of autoimmune disease. There's also talks about B12 therapy and helping this autoimmune disease. And I've had a lot of patients who have seen some changes. I'm not saying I have the cure. I'm just saying I've seen some patients who have the change for this or seen some patients who have had changes. 
So that is autoimmune gastritis. If you have any other questions, let me know. And thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Happy Wednesday, and I'll be back on Friday with a big presentation on a neurological issue. Okay. So, doo -doo -doo.